finishing out the last section, part four of the month for our nutrition questions answered. Uh, we have, should I buy organic foods? Are they healthier? Uh, it's important to note that organic is more about the way that the foods are produced versus the nutritional value. There is no conclusive scientific evidence that shows that organically produced foods are higher in nutrients. However, if your goal is to limit pesticides, antibiotics, and hormones, or you have concerns about the environmental impact, then that's when you would buy organic. Um, if you're like, it's fine, I don't care about the pesticides, the nutritional value is the same. Um, you are just paying the higher price for the less pesticide uses. Do remember that organic produces still use pesticides. They just use organic ones and ones that fit in that realm of organic. Um, remember also that accounts for like beef, turkey, chicken, etc. Um, with the chicken as an exception, the or like your free range eggs are gonna be a lot healthier just because based off of what they're eating, like chickens eat anything, including their own eggs. <laughs> um, so chicken, I would still get organic, but everything else, they're not like spraying turkeys or anything like that, um, you know, or spraying cows, uh, is really up to you and your personal financial situation. Um, but again, if you're just going to buy whatever, just make sure that you're always washing your fruits and veggies, um, not just with water, but in a vinegar bath for about 15 minutes. You don't need to do vinegar and baking soda that actually doesn't do anything. It's just vinegar and water, soak it, rinse it, you know, dry it off and then stick it in your fridge to store. That is going to take away a majority of those pesticides and things like that. So are there certain foods that can boost your metabolism? That is a really common belief. Um, but no, the answer is no. Um, there's a ton of myths there about it, but eat it like eating or like, um, green tea. Everyone's like green tea, boost your metabolism, drink lemon water. Um, all of those things. Um, it does provide a small boost in metabolism, but not enough to make a notable, like any difference. Like it's like, Oh, and then back down. Like it doesn't make any difference in your weight. It's just something that like, it doesn't like speed it up as much as you think that it would. It's just like a slight increase and then it decreases again back to normal. Granted, green tea is really good for antioxidants. Lemon water is really good for holding your hydration in you instead of peeing it all out and that type of thing. But really there aren't any foods that are gonna boost your metabolism, just eat a healthy diet. Um, so another one is like, I have a weird work schedule. Uh, will not eating at like your normal meal times mess up the metabolism? No. Um, like. If, a lot of people are going to ask, is skipping breakfast okay? Or should I eat dinner at five or eight? Is that better? Because I like maybe they have a conflict um, and they have to pick like an early or a late dinner. Either way, it's important to fuel yourself every two to four hours to keep your blood sugar in a straight line versus the up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, starting about an hour or so after breakfast. So um you do wanna try and eat within an hour of waking up. That is when your cortisol levels are the highest. So in order for that cortisol to slowly droop down so that you're able to sleep at night, you do wanna eat breakfast within an hour of getting up. Um, and then after that, every two to four hours, you do want to consume something, some type of caloric content, even if it's in like a drink form, like I had a matcha latte, that's got some calorie content in it. That is something to still fuel me and keep me going. Um, it is highly important to have breakfast every day. Um, honestly, I can't stress it enough. I find that with certain clientele, um, well, most of them, honestly, if they have breakfast, they kind of tend to overall feel better. They're more focused throughout the day and just have a better regulated appetite. So you're not starving. You're not really, really full. Um, any of those types of things. And then I also, this is another question, uh, hear a lot of comments along the lines of like, I was really bad this weekend. I went and I got ice cream and I had pizza and I'll just make up for it, you know, and eat super healthy the next few days or like super healthy this week. And then like, I'll do it again. So it's something that I hear so much and it really frustrates me uh, because that's sorting foods into something that is a black and white. It's a good and a bad. Um, and these categories are not something that I like to see because food is a gray area. You know, you want to eat for enjoyment as well as nourishment. Um, and there isn't a black and white. So there's a lot of like food rules out there that people make. Um, like I eat healthy during the week so I can eat out during the weekend. And it's not necessarily a bad thing 
However, because of the way society has kind of turned everything in um, the industry with women, with like our families, um, we already have a lot of food trauma, so we don't need any more. So I would not recommend doing that. Um, but when restriction and rules are added to a person's eating habits, again, it has the potential to hurt their relationship with food. And we don't want to do that because it's really, really hard to recover from that. Like, and I mean, fully recover from that ever. Um, it's something that I personally always have to deal with um, and always are constantly thinking about uh, because of my trauma with food. So it introduces the potential for guilt, for slip ups, and it's not a sustainable and enjoyable way of living. It's just not. Um, our bodies don't really work that way. You know, there's no such thing as being bad with food. Our bodies are smart, so don't underestimate your digestive system. If you eat out more on the weekend, your body is going to figure out how to metabolize the food into energy at some point, or it's going to get stored. So like, for example, one of my favorite foods is Ben and Jerry's gluten-free, uh, non-dairy fish food. Um, I give myself permission to have that once a week because it's not going to change my body composition. Eating that once a week is going to do literally nothing because remember, and I've said this before, the Oreo example, if you have one Oreo one day or a few Oreos one day, it's what you do overall in 365 days that is a constant practice, not the random things that you eat um, throughout the week, right? Um, that's not to say, remember that a well-balanced diet isn't important. You still want to have a whole foods lifestyle, eating fruits, veggies, whole grains, proteins, fats, all of those good things. But the bottom line here is having a variety of foods, including those fun foods like donuts and cake and pizza and all of that, um, is totally okay and your body will thank you for giving it the fuel that it needs it will it always does last question here in this series is like saying like if i've got a few people that you know they keep waking up in the middle of the night not really to pee but they just kind of wake up at like 2 a.m or 3 a.m or 3 30 or 2 45 or 4 and they can't get back to sleep and this is like a nightly occurrence this is like a habit um so if this is happening consistently then the problem may be less your sleep quality and more your blood sugar. So when you're sleeping, you're fasting, right? We're not eating every two to three hours, we're fasting. So our blood sugar is gonna drop. If it drops too low, you're gonna wake up. Your body's gonna be like, hey, get up, do something. Because if it drastically drops, your body's going to need sugar. It's going to need something. That's why you can't go back to sleep. Um, I recommend eating a small snack before bed to see if that helps the problem. If after a few weeks you still wake up, you may be magnesium deficient, and that's magnesium glyconate, um, not citrate glyconate. Um, you'll probably need supplementation to bring you back up to normal levels. Um, most of us are magnesium deficient as well, just as a, a FYI. But try the blood sugar thing first. That should kind of keep it down. It may take a couple of weeks to get there. So like I said, eat a little snacky snack before bed. Um, it really does help. I know some people are like, never eat before you go to bed. It's fine. It doesn't do anything. Um, it's perfectly okay. As long as you're still waking up in the morning and you're like, oh, need to eat breakfast, pretty hungry, you know, about 20, 30 minutes after you wake up, then you're golden. You don't need to eat like a huge meal, just something small to keep your blood sugar from dropping too, too low at night. Uh, again, if you do have any questions, please comment below. If I didn't hit any, I can always hit them next month or I can just answer them um, in a short video after this. But that is it for your nutrition questions answered for the month of July.